what is this what do you see here you can see that the anti helix is very very prominent isn't it and that is what is known as yes it is named after the great mosat of madras isn't it who is this he is a raman mosat of madras and the other one is the real mosat okay and it is known as mosat seer okay this is a condition known as mosat seer now Mossad seer is nothing but prominent and helix. Okay, prominent and helix. Now, what is this? You can see that. Yes, you have a helix here. You have a and helix here. Okay, and along with. this you there is a third crust okay third crust and what is this third crust known as it is called stars bar stars bar or stars here or it is also known as elf here okay everyone is familiar with dobby the house elf isn't it it's also called elf here okay and for all these ear anomalies what you do is you can do an otoplasty okay that is the plastic surgery prior of the pinna okay otoplasty now what do you see here you can see that the anti helix is absent and the congal bowl is very deep okay now what is this condition known as this condition is what is known as bat ear because here the pinna pinna is actually resembling the pinna of a bat okay so this is what is known as bat ear and what is the surgery that you do for bat ear for bat ear also you can do otoplasty and this otoplasty is having a specific name and what is that it is called mustard operation okay mustard operation if you look the mustard isn't it the mustard that you take for or the vegetable curries yes and the difference is that there is an extra e here okay mustard operation is being done for bat ear okay and what is this here you see the pinna is folded over like this and this folded over appearance appearance is resembling that of a low probit Okay, low probit, and hence it got its name, low pier. Okay, low pier. Now, what do you see here? You see that the pinna is abnormally large, and that is called. Yes, what is it called? It is called macro. Macro tia. Yes, auto means ear. Okay, so. Large pinna means macro tia, small pinna means micro tia. You see, here the pinna is present, but only some of the features are recognizable. Okay, and here pinna is totally absent pinna, and this is called anosia, anosia, and here it is microtia, and there is a grading for this microtia. Okay, how is it graded? It is graded by marks classification. and in this marks classification it is graded into four grades depending upon the development of the pinna and in the fourth grade it is so severe that there will be anosia okay and if you look carefully in this picture karl marx ears are not visible and you can assume that karl marx is having microtia so that you remember okay just look at this picture his pinna is not at all seen isn't it and this microtia is associated with syndromes like golden heart syndrome trucker colin syndrome and klippel fehl syndrome okay so the various syndromes associated are golden heart syndrome then klippel fehl syndrome and trucker colin syndrome okay now how will you do surgery 
in a child with micro microtia of course you will have to do a surgery isn't it now what is the surgery that is done i already told it's autoplasty that is done now since it is a congenital anomaly it is seen since birth will you straight away go for a surgery no you will have to wait till a certain age what is that you will have to wait till 6 to 7 years of age why because you will have to wait for development of the costal cartilage okay costal cartilage and one zone cartilage is actually used for reconstruction so it is autologous costal cartilage and as you see in this picture god did the first uh, removal of this rib isn't it it is from the man's rib woman was formed according to bible isn't it so uh, just remember like that the rib cartilage is being used for reconstruction of the pinna and it is only under 6 to 7 years is reach this surgery is done because it is only by this time the uh, costal cartilage has a proper development and the pinna reaches the adult size okay because they are using the opposite pinna as a template for making the uh, pinna for reconstruction okay and this reconstruction is done using autologous rib cartilage okay now until then you can't just uh, tell the child and uh, he you won't be able to hear properly because of this uh, microtia exonotric anatresia you are having a severe conductive hearing loss so will you be able to tell her to put a hearing aid like this no because the child is having no pinna or exonotric canal isn't it so in that case you will have to anchor the hearing aid into the bone and that is what is known as bone anchored hearing aid okay or baha baha and one of the indications of baha is actually congenital ear anomalies okay congenital ear anomalies so you put a baha inside so that the child will be able to appreciate hearing better okay now this is another picture based question what do you see here you can see there is an opening here isn't it and there is another opening in the floor of the ac now what is this i told you that exonotric canal is developing from yes is it developing from the branchial arch no it is developing from the first ectodermal cleft and is it from the whole of first ectodermal cleft no only the dorsal part i told you that the ventral part is regressing if the ventral part fails to regress what happens there is a communication between the dorsal and the ventral part like this and it communicates through the parotid and this communication has got two openings one in the floor of the ac second in the area which is seen between sternocleido mastoid muscle and angle of mandible okay between these there is another opening and this is what is known as colloral fistula again this colloral fistula requires the excision of whole tract okay the whole colloral fistula has to be excised and sometimes it may be passing through the parotid and there is danger of injuring the facial nerve okay so it is very important that the colloral fistula is excised as a whole otherwise there will be recurrence just as in preauricular sinus if not excised properly without removing the whole tract there will be recurrence and for this sinus fistula and all to know the whole tract it is better to do a sinus ct sinusogram okay colloral fistula it is done because you have to know where all it is going okay exactly through which area it is going whereas in preauricular sinus sometimes if you are only suspecting it is going through between the branches of facial nerve or if it is extending up to the parotid only in that case you have to do a ct sinogram okay that is you will be injecting dye into the sinus and then taking a ct okay in normal scenario it is not at all needed okay so that's about colloral fistula now as i told you the exonotric canal is developing from the dorsal part of the first ectodermal cleft but the exonotric meatus that is the opening that you see here 
it is actually guarded by the track as isn't it and hence it is actually developing from the same first pharyngeal arch from which the track is develops okay so first ectodermal cleft leads to formation of first EAC whereas the yes, first pharyngeal arch leads to formation of external rotary meatus ok so first branchial arch anomaly was second branchial cleft anomaly first branchial pouch anomaly second branchial pouch anomaly what is the answer this is a very easy question isn't it first branchial cleft anomaly it is ok so first branchial cleft is leading to the formation of external rotary canal the first pharyngeal arch along with tragus it is leading to formation of exonotary meatus that is the opening that is being guarded by the tragus ok a newborn presents in bilateral microcean attrition of external ear canal correctly surgery is performed at 1 year 5 to 7 years puberty adulthood so I already told you it is actually only after 6 years of age the surgery is done why because you have to wait till the opposite pinna as at the size and the uh, coastal cartilage has to undergo proper development ok so the answer is 5 to 7 years now suppose the patient who is coming to you is a boxer ok and he is having a swelling over the pinna what is the condition that you suspect he need not be a boxer he can even be a wrestler ok wrestler and the boxer and wrestler are having high chance of getting hit repeatedly over the pin isn't it and what can result can result in hematoma like this of course hematoma can result and if a patient comes with hematoma like this you will have to aspirate it first and come further it is blood and after aspiration you have to do conduit dressing conduit dressing that is in, just in the shape of the conge you have to put something you can even put a button ok button also can be put or simply ghost piece is enough and after that you can do a master dressing as you see here master dressing can be put ok now I was showing you the picture of boxer and wrestler why because a question that is constantly asked in exams is boxers here or a wrestlers here now what is that is it hematoma of pinna actually it is not hematoma of pinna it is actually organized hematoma of pinna that is causing the invasion of the perichondrium ok what is happening when there is hematoma the perichondrium is getting stripped off because of the pressure caused by the hematoma and blood is getting filled there and because of that a vascular necrosis of the cartilage can result because the whole blood supply is coming from the perichondrium because of that the cartilage can shrink and because of that the cartilage can have a loss of shape and finally resemble a cauliflower like this and that is why it is known as cauliflower ear deformity ok cauliflower ear deformity now what can happen if there is a trauma to the pinnal like this you can see there is ear bleed after the trauma and in such a condition of course you will have to rule out a temporal bone fracture because it's, it may not be just blood it can even be CSF coming along with the blood isn't it and blood along with CSF if it is coming out like this it is very dangerous to pack the ear canal or put ear drops in it why because if you are putting ear drops or packing the ear canal there is high chance that there is infection through the CSF leak and that can result in meningitis ok so in such a condition we never allow to pack but if you are so sure there is no temple bone fracture how you can be sure by taking a CT then you can actually pack the ear why because in most of the conditions if you are taking you will be able to know exactly what is happening when there is ear bleed like this one of the causes the 
condylar fracture that goes into the extraneurotic canal and cause trauma and there will be a severe bleed and in that case you might have to put a pack and stop the bleeding from the ear canal okay now if the pinna is avulsed like this due to some accident the pinna is completely stripped off in that case you will have to do a reconstruction as soon as possible okay and for that you have to take the patient to a theater first you have to take him to an emergency ot and not do just in the procedure room of the casualty you will have to give a thorough wash okay thorough wash with vitadin and remove all the debris from the pinna and then ideally you have to go for a microvascular anastomosis okay okay in case of aval spina it is ideal to go for a neovascular sorry microvascular anastomosis okay and it has to be done as early as possible because if the pinna gets deprived of the blood supply it can undergo necrosis so you have to be very vigilant regarding that okay now another form of trauma that can occur is when you are so today we have learned in detail about the development of pinna and axillary canal we have learned that first ectodermal cleft its dorsal part leads to formation of axillary canal and the ventral part if it persists persistent ventral part leads to formation of collateral fistula collateral fistula and we have learned how six hillocks of his result in formation of the pinna and if there is any fusion defect it can result in formation of various anomalies of pinna such as pas preauricular skin tag and even microtia macrotia all these can result because of that and what else did we learn we learned how the external artery meatus is being formed from the first branchial arch because it is being guarded by the same tragus that is resulting from the first hillock of the first branchial arch and we learned about some traumatic disorders such as boxer sears boxer sear and uh, how the organized hematoma is resulting in the cartilage necrosis resulting in a shriveled up pinna without any shape and the trauma to the axillary canal can even be self inflicted like this when there is a self inflicted trauma to the axillary canal the edema that occurs can result in an infection which can be bacterial or even fungal and all these can result in otitis externa or inflammation of the axillary canal we'll be dealing with it in the next class that is in the topic inflammatory and neoplastic disorders of extend layer and for now goodbye